Hello, my name is Mohammed Sinhaji, and this is my presentation for my uh, Natural Sciences 319 class, Human Inheritance, in the fall of 2018. Today, I'll be talking about XYY syndrome, also known as Jacob syndrome. So what is XYY? Uh, it's a syndrome where affected males have an X chromosome and two Y chromosomes instead of one, usually due to a de novo mutation. This means that the mutation is random and isn't necessarily inherited or caused by complications in the parent's genetic makeup. The syndrome also affects about uh, one in every 1,000 men. So how does that happen exactly? Though an actual cause is an unknown, is not known, uh, it's most often because of a case of non-disjunction. Non-disjunction is when chromosomes fail to separate during cell division. Uh, in this particular instance, the two sister chromosomes of the Y chromosome don't disjoin like they're supposed to, which means you have a cell with two copies of the Y chromosome and a cell without either. The cell with the two Y chromosome copies fuses with the cell carrying the copy of the X chromosome, and this results in the child having XYY syndrome. The main phenotypic differences to a male with a healthy pair of sex chromosomes is that the, those with XYY are usually taller than average, and you also usually have a decent amount of acne. Um, they can also have a larger head, large teeth, a scoliosis, which is the curvature to the shape of their spine, and they're sometimes born with learning difficulties and may have speech problems. They're also predisposed to having mental disabilities like attention deficit hyperactive disorder, autism spectrum disorder, anxiety, depression, and things like that. Also note how the last point to the graphic to the right says you made the right choice. We'll touch more on this soon. The history of XYY syndrome is certainly an interesting one. The first recorded case of XYY uh, was found by Dr. Avery Sandberg and his team in Buffalo, New York in 1961. The man was receiving genetic testing not for his own health, but for his daughter, who had Down syndrome. In the coming years, there was a flurry of scientific studies released that linked the possession of the extra chromosome to a disposition of criminal behavior. Um, what was true about mo almost all of these studies, though, is that they are always conducted in a hospital, prison, or mental institution. This suggests that there was a serious case of sampling bias in most of these studies. Uh, if you visit a prison specifically looking for people with XYY, chances are that they'll have a history of crime. Regardless, the negative scientific buzz around XYY was only exacerbated when in 1966, Richard Speck brutally tortured, raped, and murdered eight student nurses in South Chicago Hume Community Hospital. Because of his tall stature, acne scars, and clear disposition towards crime, it was widely believed that he was a carrier of the second Y chromosome as well. Later genetic testing found that he was just actually XY, but it didn't matter. The bad press surrounding the syndrome promptly triggered a significant cultural and societal response. Around the time the case of Richard Speck was popularized, uh, news publications like the New York Times were publishing articles on XYY and its implications. Though they, could, they conceded that it was a stretch to claim that the millions of people that have XYY are all disposed to criminality, they did write on those affected by XYY that there does seem good reason to keep an eye on it and them. In 1970, Bentley Glass, who was the president of the American Association for the Advancement of Science at the time, advocated for the legalization of abortion for fetuses that showed the presence of the extra Y chromosome. Later that decade, the XYY man was released. Uh, a British TV show that follows the life of Spider Scott, a man with XYY who was just released from prison for burglary and is doing his best to avoid a life of crime. Uh, as for treatments, there isn't specific treatment for the possession of the XYY chromosome. Those with XYY rather re uh, receive symptomatic treatment for their symptoms that Jacob's symptoms brings them out. Uh, extra attention in schooling, speech therapy, proper medication for things like HD, ADHD, depression or anything else like that that they may develop uh, is the best treatment that they can get. And finally, for the implications for society, uh, for starters, most people with XYY around 80 to 90 percent don't know that they have the syndrome in the first place. Uh, other than the false criminality that was exclusively associated to XYY, no side effect is uh, uniquely tied to it. As a result, people just deal with the symptoms that they have and have no idea it's because of the extra chromosome. It's also difficult finding a wealth of information about XYY um, as it ever since it reached its peak in relevance in the 1970s, uh, there hasn't been much work done on it since there's not much work that can be done. Uh, as genetic testing becomes more standard, parents will know if their child is XYY and will inevitably have the choice to abort the pregnancy. 
uh, the graphic that I mentioned from before is trying to prevent people from doing that, prevent that from just happening. Uh, but as genetic editing is also becoming more popularized and the prospect of design of babies is coming closer, parents may choose to forego having a baby with Jacob's syndrome. Only time will tell, though. But until then, XYY men live among us and exist as functional members of society like the rest of us. And that's it for my presentation. Hopefully you learned more about XYY. Uh, thank you for watching. Thanks a lot.